Hi, thanks for listening to another episode of Patrons and Partnerships. Today we spoke with Satchel Ray and Gracie Castine of Satchel's Pizza about the history of Satchel's and the grant program they run for nonprofits in Gainesville. This interview was edited for length and clarity and was posted in two parts. The first episode was posted on February 24th and can be found anywhere you listen to podcasts. doesn't mean that we can't pull out of our own pockets some more profits mm-hmm. to send to charities as time goes on too because now we're more established you know it went from two to three you know instead of going from three to four we can just put aside a few more thousand dollars for charities would you be open to the idea of letting people donate directly to the fund do you think oh yeah oh, yeah i think that's a good idea because i and we would have to it would if we're going to do that too it'd be a good way to try to um promote that idea like Donate now on the website, you know, where you yeah. could actually go and Venmo the money. Donate or, now and you can sit in the van or something. I mean, a lot of times, <laughs> well, that's true. We could have perks. I mean, a lot of times they do GoFundMes and things nowadays to raise money for things like that. But mm-hmm. th- there should just be a way to donate. And we would just have to figure out the logistics on our end. Of- right. It would be hard to tell the public who they're giving to because you don't even know who it is at a certain point yeah right they're they're trusting us to do the vetting of i mean there is a certain amount of vetting when you read the grants you can you can tell a lot by what they're doing and and now nowadays we know all these mm-hmm. we know what these people do you follow them on social media you know current problems they come to every lunch. weekend going to be out there pulling stuff out of a, a river you know if they're in the restaurant they're a captive audience they can't go anywhere until they eat their pizza well, it's true. If we had a way, if we were promoting donating to our grant program at mm-hmm. the restaurant, those are all great ideas. 10, 20 bucks here and there. You're going to get 100 bucks here and there. All that's great. And, you know, bottom line is there's like 100 things like that that can make the restaurant better. And I have, you know, I only have so much time and energy for that stuff. I'm making stained glass. I'm making tiles. I'm painting houses. Like, you know, I have other hobbies. We don't we don't do all the stuff we're supposed to do. It's like yeah. <laughs> that's why we're not Papa John's, you know. We're just I mean, one place, two places now. You're pretty successful for all the things you're not doing. Well, so. the success is honestly a part of the, the the large group of people who work there and these are dynamic people. Like we don't just have just anybody. I mean, these are people who like are smart and they're dedicated to their jobs and the success comes from like I'm really good at finding those people. That's one of my strengths, but I'm not really good at, you know, being CEO as good at that. But I mean, and the CEO has different jobs and one of them is building a team. But I, I feel like when Gracie became available to work and we had didn't know each other that well, but we were, you know, we're in we're the same age group, have same, we're a small town. So I jumped on that chance. And I think <laughs> that um, because I knew that she would be a good fit and we have so many good people. And, and that's really what makes Satchel's work from the guy booking the music to running the store and booking the store to making the prep every day to washing the dishes every night. Like there's not a part of that restaurant you can't go to from the office to the plants to the maintenance where you don't have people that are dedicated to their job and want to make the world a better place. Mm-hmm. And so the success is really that. That's what really the success is like all these people come together for this common cause, which is I. I mean, it's kind of pizza, but kind of art and a community. Community. Space. It's yeah. really community, yeah. you know, which yeah. is all those things. How did you get involved with Satchel's, Gracie? I've been in restaurants and catering my whole life, and I grew up here. I met Satchel in a pool in Homestead for a friend's wedding twenty years ago, oh, and he said, "He met? said." <laughs> What do you think? What do you think? Should I open a restaurant over here on the east side of town? I'm like, yeah, go for it. Sure. And I was all about it. I just was in between jobs, and he got word. And She'd been doing catering. <laughs> yeah. Right. And the last job, I helped open the Woolly. Oh, okay. So, yeah, she was in the business already. It's been a great job. I love it. She can make her own hours, but she's, like, prompt, you know? Like, she <laughs> yeah. never misses her, like... We have people that can make their own hours, and they make their own hours. Uh, they make their own. You never know where you're going to see them. But not Gracie. Gracie can come and go as she please, but she sticks to a pretty, pretty tight schedule. I was not surprised when I got here ten minutes early, and you were already here. <laughs>
I like that in an employee, honestly. I like to give people freedom, but I like it when they're... Well, yeah, and in catering, it's nice to know that they're going to show up. Yeah, yeah, well, catering requires that sort yeah. of planning mm-hmm. of a person like you who's like, okay, let's get all the details written down. Catering's come a long way. There's a lot involved in catering when you have big groups. Of... And people say, do you cater? And I'm like, well, yeah, it's a big pizza delivery and salad. And desserts. It's it's a big communications <laughs> it is. effort because it is. like how many gluten free, how many yeah. vegan. Where are you going? What how many tables are you gonna have? What is your service gonna look like? We're not coming to setting up everything, you know, we'll bring the stuff, but and now he has a party space in back that you can yeah. reserve. Oh yeah, next to Lightning Salvage. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Under the plane. We can do like oh. fifty people basically. Are you getting busier now that COVID is everyone's sort of like adapting to COVID? Yes. Yeah. 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 The beginning was a little rough, Mm -hmm. of course, but we did do a lot of to-go orders because obviously we're set up, you know, pizza and salad are... Easy to go. Yeah, it's hard if you have a fine dining place. Sit down and it, and that really doesn't work when, you know, there's a deadly respiratory virus going around. He opened another restaurant during a pandemic, so... Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) But take out. It seems to have worked out just fine. I mean... Take out, take out. Yeah, Yeah. It's been going good. When you have enough applicants, how do you decide who gets the fund? So it's Gracie and me and my wife. Mm -hmm. We read the grants and we talk about it. It's a pretty easy agreement for the most part. Sometimes we all have different ideas, but we work through them and come out with one goal. Yeah. I mean, sometimes somebody's really advocating for something like, I really want to do this. And they're like, okay. And other, you know, so there's a give and take there because, and and then we try to. We try and keep up with what's actually going on in the community right now, Mm -hmm. you know, currently. So it's not some kind of like far-fetched idea about what this nonprofit wants to do. It's about who are they going to address with, with these funds now. Right. Because, and sometimes we'll get these grants that are part of a much, much larger grant. They might be asking for $5,000 and it's a million dollar project. And, you know, and sometimes it's just like, well, are they, one of the questions we might ask is, are they going to be able to get this money somewhere else? And if the answer to that is yes, then that might be another mark on the side of not giving it to them because there are organizations that aren't going to get the money anywhere else. And when the repurpose project was starting out and they were trying to rate, they needed $850 to file for their 501c3. Like they're not even a nonprofit yet and they're trying to raise money. They probably didn't have a lot of places to get that money. And so that's where like the Civic Media Center, current problems, we're trying to really um, focus on some of these smaller groups and yeah, bread of the mighty. And that tends to be our mission is more like small groups. Uh, always LBGTQ issues yes. is is important. Mental health, uh, homelessness. So we just talk about it. Sometimes we'll go back and ask questions. Yeah, and we go back and say, "Tell us more about what you're trying to do here." I mean, it's. I thought it was going to be so fun. <laughs> but it's not because because there's so many people you can't give to, yeah. mm-hmm. you know, like you can't spay and neuter every damn dog and cat in the country, you know. And so um, and you want, you know, whatever, there's like you want to be able to help. That's just a, a dumb example. But like there's so many organizations that need money mm-hmm. and we've got fifteen hundred dollars to give away. You know, we've got mm-hmm. 10 grants here, 15 thousand dollars worth of need so you think it's fun and it is you get to give away a few but you don't really you're not elon musk yeah and you only have a limited amount of money you want to make sure the money that you give away does have like an impact on well the and community. that's the fun part but it's also it's outweighed stressful. by the part that you can't give money to the other people that you think these people are deserving sometimes we could just keep yeah. that and just say we'll look at it next time around yeah especially if it's not something that's needed specifically for that time period something that could be just as useful down the road right. as yeah. like right now can you think of like the most notable program or organization that you've Uh-oh. donated Crazy donated to glasses. recently that's a good sign. <laughs> I, one that I, one serious. that I really like and I thought was very interesting is uh, One Love Prison Meditation. Uh huh. And it was started by this guy Tim who used to work at Satchels. Yeah. Oh. He was a good employee too. He was always in a good mood and fun and funny. So he started a program where he's in the prisons teaching meditation practices and mm-hmm. 
He started his yeah. own nonprofit, and yeah. I think it's just him right. at this point teaching prisoners to meditate. And the prisoners have, have been real receptive to right. it. Right. And so we raised three grand in the RUFC for May and June for his program. Mm -hmm. And he sent us some T-shirts. What is your relationship with Repurpose? Do you have, like, a relationship with them? Because it seems like they sort of overlap with Lightning Salvage. A right. Bit. Well, Repurpose came around and was downtown on Main Street, South Main, mm -hmm. or in the old fi uh, near the old fire station. And they had this warehouse, and they, it was just a junk shop, you know? And I love junk shops. And so I would go there, and I noticed that over time, and it didn't take long, but every time I went, it was more organized and more organized and more organized. And I was like, wow. And it was just got more inspiring because it's one thing when you see a pile of junk. It's another when everything's like in jars and boxes and right. together. You're going to look for an old lamp, and there are all the old lamps right there. Right. Yeah. And so it, I was like, wow, this, this place. And so I guess I met the owners then. I'm never good at remembering, like, how I met somebody. And then um, – what happens is because we use recycled stuff, people bring us junk all the time. Like, here's mm -hmm. all my lids that I've been using for the last 10 years. I'm like, well, we stopped using lids like a few years ago, but we'll take your lids. So w they needed to move. They were getting kicked out because of the fire station. And it's really hard to find things in Gainesville. And a good place for them was hard, too. And so two doors down from us was this very large property that was for sale. And he was trying to sell it, and I and he was Mallard's Furniture, and I had been in there talking to him because he's a neighbor, and he wanted to sell it, and they didn't have enough money, and it was going back and forth. And I just really wanted to see them there because we don't have enough stuff happening out near Satchels. The mm -hmm. more stuff happening by us, the better. If you're coming out there to go to Repurpose, you're going to get pizza. If you're going out there for pizza, you might go to Repurpose. Everything's South Main, downtown, 6th Street. There's all these areas in town. But we kind of have to make our own world out there. And so when there's a property for sale, I'm like, I really want this to happen. So I offered to fill the gap between what the guy wanted for the property and what they had. And, you know, it was a substantial amount of money, but it wasn't like buying a new car, you mm -hmm. know. And so um, they were able to get the building that went through. And so having them, when people bring me junk, I can take it to them. And now if I need it, it's there. And if it's gone, that's great. But yeah. at least I can go over there and get inspiration and get stuff. And we have a lot of junk coming through. People want to bring us all their old collections. <laughs> and sometimes that works and sometimes it doesn't. So they're great. And then I just, it happened to be that they, um, we started to get to know Sarah, who's the owner, mm -hmm. and her husband, Brian. And they have two little kids. And we started to get to know them a little bit, me and my wife. And they, they have, they bought 10 acres kind of, across the street from me. I live out in southeast Gainesville, and they're a few minutes away um, on 10 acres. And we're out in the country, and they're in the country. So we started to get to know them a little bit, and then our relationship just got better from from their business being next to our business and, mm -hmm. and the back and forth that went with that. And so it's been great. And then with they wanted to do a new place, and when I saw that it was on Waldo Road, I was, like, really excited because another thing on our part of town – I love the idea that their two places would be close to each other. You could go to the repurpose and the reuse planet. Um, I love that they're recycling. We don't have a good used furniture store, honestly, in this town, really at all. I mean, it's hard if you and they that's what they wanted to make. And it was a great building. So early on, I just said, hey, I'll give you 20 grand, you know, for that project. Mm -hmm. And they Need, you know, they needed a lot more than that. But Sarah says that that was a good start to get her to start to raise the money. She thought, oh, this might be possible. That's 10% or what I need or whatever. Yeah. And so she started the process and miraculously was able to get the money she needed and raise the money and open. I just like them so much. They're like, they really remind me of my wife and I, you know, 10, 15 years ago. Because mm -hmm. they're, you know, they have little kids. Our kids are older and they're a little bohemian. We were a little bohemian back then. Hippies? They, maybe. <laughs> pretty much. Okay. I was wondering, because I do sort of think of that stretch of 23rd as like the satchels and repurpose area. Yeah. Like I sort of satchels and repurpose, repurpose and satchels. So I'm I'm glad to know that you do have a relationship with them. Yeah, that's uh I think that there's a lot to be said for like so when the apocalypse comes and everything <laughs> blows up, the great emergency, 
if we all meet up at Repurpose Planet, we're gonna be fine because we can build we can build like anything we need: radio <laughs> transmitters, yeah. LCD screens, podcast can, equipment, whatever we need. We can do, have a radio need. station out of there. Like you can build like like three wheel motorcycles, oh, great. like Mad Max style. <laughs> like everything's there. You know, it's that. great for yeah. teachers. Is oh it? yeah, they have all sorts of crafting. Supplies. It's great for artists. I mean, if if I it, well, I always need little things, and they usually have them, and mm-hmm. weird things too. Like I need a six foot bar or whatever. But if I'm just like I need some inspiration, I can go in there and like, oh, I'm gonna make a mobile from this. Like, there's just it's a great resource for the community. Yeah. I I think it's like it makes our community unique. And most communities have thrift stores, but they don't have places like that. I mean, they'll take a lot of junk, you know, yeah. and then organize it. Their lids now are organized in this like round metal bin between like blue, green, white, oh, wow. orange, red. And it has like five layers and they spin. It's like mm-hmm. an old nails bin and it's all lids and they're all sorted by color. The reorganization they did during COVID is really impressive. Like yeah. everything is, if you need it, you can find it so easily in there now. And like the craziest stuff too. Is there anything else you'd like to talk about today? I want Gracie to talk. What do you want me to talk about? I don't know. <laughs> What did you have for I'm breakfast? Just, thank you for asking us to do this, and hopefully the word will get out that we do give away grants, and we want to find other nonprofits that we don't even know about in Gainesville that need help getting going, like the Repurpose Project. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. We're looking for new. We're looking for up and coming startup right. uh, nonprofits, and if you could get this onto Seth Rogen, that would be. <laughs> Help us get our word out. Actually, I've never listened to Seth Rogen. I really don't know anything yeah, about same. him except that, you know, what you see in the headlines. I'll but. take a leaf out of your book and just text him and DM yeah, him on Twitter. Yeah, just, until just, he, Twitter, just he DM him on me. Twitter and see if he gets back to you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, thanks. I, I hope it works out for you. Thanks, Eleanor. Yeah. yeah, thank you for joining us. Sure. I know you're both really busy, so we appreciate you coming in for sure. this today. Thank you. Thank you for spending a whole hour yeah. of your day a talking with us. A whole hour. All right, try fun. to get 15 minutes out of that. Good yeah. <laughs> thank you. Have a good day. Thanks for listening to Patrons and Partnerships. If you know of an individual or organization you'd like to recommend for an interview, email us at lpsfprogram at gmail.com. To listen to more episodes, find us on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, or Spotify. And be sure to check out the Alachua County Library on Spotify while you're there for chill playlists to read to, handpicked by our librarians. Storytime on the Green is back for the new year starting January 11th. Visit our site at aclib.us slash storytime on the green for a list of times and locations for all branches. Partnership staff hold story times at Smoky Bear Park off of 15th every Thursday at 10.30 a.m., weather permitting, and we have a representative from the Dolly Parton Imagination Library to help you sign up. The Dolly Parton Imagination Library provides preschool children with a free book every month until age five. If you have a child under age five in your household, it's a great opportunity to encourage their love of reading. Have you heard the news? Your library card now grants you access to Hoopla, a music and video streaming service with thousands of albums, comics, and movies you can enjoy on any device with the Hoopla app. There's no need to place a hold. All of the content is available on demand at any time. To check it out, go to aclib.us slash Hoopla. Looking for a way to encourage your child's love of science and technology? Then place a hold on one of ACLD's STEM kits, courtesy of the Rotary Club of Gainesville. Each kit includes hands-on educational exploration of a STEM topic, with an interactive toy, book, and DVD on topics ranging from electricity to physics. Check out the full listing of kits at aclib.us slash stemkits.